Coach, what's been the focus this week, uh, after coming off last week and from what you've seen to get ready for Tulsa? Well, just, you know, transitioning from defending an option team to defending a team that's just, you know, wide open, spreads you out um, vertically, horizontally, throw the ball around. Um, focuses, you know, for us defensively, we just, we, we got to be more disciplined, you know. Um, if you look at the season right now, the, the, the scoring drives that we've had have all been a result of, of big explosive plays. You know, when we haven't done that, we've been good against the run for the most part. Uh, when we've been able to keep things in front of us, uh, people aren't really scoring points. You know, so that's the focus for us. We've got to get better, uh, specifically in the back end of uh, executing our coverages, keeping things in front of us, making people earn what they get. Uh, but the focus is always the same, just getting ready for the, the team that we're playing and, and uh, trying to find what they do well and put together a plan and, and, um, and, and always getting better at the, the fundamentals, the techniques of what we're doing and um, always reevaluating where we're at, what we need to get better at, what, what we need to change, uh, what we need to fix, you know, uh, along those lines. Is it hard? I, I would imagine it's very hard when the plays you're talking about, the big chunk plays where you're really not going to get a sense of whether – the guys have fully gotten to what you're doing until it actually happens in the game, correct? I'm sorry, I didn't understand your question. Well, is it hard to tell like, throughout the week in practice trying to work on stopping those the big chunk play, mm. but do you, unable to really get a sense of it until it happens in a game, how they react? Yeah, I mean, you're always going to see new things in the game, right? But if you if you use your uh, you, you follow your rules and you and you play your, your coverage principles, and th th those things still shouldn't happen. Um, now, if a, if a guy gets beat in a one on one situation, and you know those are things that happen. I mean, they're they're, they're players are on scholarship too, you know, just like ours. And so, but it's the busts, it's the miscommunications, uh, it's not being where you're supposed to be. That that those are the things that kill you. Not not when ball goes up and it's a 50-50 ball and the receiver makes a great play, you know, the running back makes a great run and we have guys there. It's, it's, it's when we, we completely take our eyes off our key uh, as we did on, on Saturday against Air Force in that first series, things like that. You just, you know, we, we have to eliminate those things here at the academy. There's just the margin for error is so small. Uh, can't afford to make those kind of mistakes. Is it true to say this Tulsa team, their offensive line seems to be each year a, a, an athletic group that, though big can seem like they can really move. Yeah, they've, since I've been here, the throw line every year is, is really good. Uh, they graduate some really good players. I sent a guy to the NFL last year, who's I think starting in the NFL right now, if I'm not mistaken, but they, they replace them with the same types of offensive linemen. Uh, they're physical, uh, get after you up front, really good run blockers. They're big, um, they're always good up front. You know, every year I've been here, that, that hasn't changed. Thanks. Yes, sir. Tyler Smith is indeed starting at left tackle for the Dallas Cowboys and playing yeah. great, playing great. Uh, Bill Wagner. Wanted to talk about Tulsa a little bit. Um, the quarterback, Davis Brin, the redshirt senior, he's been around a while. What, what do you see out of him, coach? Yeah, really good player. He's got a, a big arm, um, understands their system, you know, can make any throw on the field. Uh, athletic enough to, to to beat you with his feet if he needs to. Um, and I think he's been in that system for a long time now, really comfortable with it, a lot like East Carolina's quarterback. Um, I think they have a lot of trust in him, and I think that, that his teammates do do as well. Uh, they've got some big athletic receivers to spread it around to. Uh, they're really good players. Um, and they're, they're challenged in the run game too. You know, it's, it's the RPO world that they live in as well. They take what you give them. And uh, you, you got to be able to stop the run at the same time. Uh, you know, they spread you out with uh, the receivers, with, you know, super wide splits, kind of Art Briles type of offense uh, from that same tree. And, and so they, they spread you out, make, make it really complicated, conflict you in a lot of different ways. So Bren has been injured. And uh, if he cannot go, there's this uh, redshirt freshman Braxton. But I would imagine you'd be happy to see a younger guy that you – you know, it isn't his experience, right? Um, yes and no. Uh, you know, I've seen enough of Braxton to know that he's a, he's a really big, super athletic, uh, more of a running type of quarterback, um, you know, than Bren maybe, but he's got a big arm too. Um, 
don't know if he's as comfortable in the system yet, obviously, because he's, he's a redshirt freshman, but he's, he's also a really talented, good player. Um, so either one of those guys, you know, will be ready for both of them. Um, but they're both really good players. And Keelan Stokes has been around a long time. He's an, another one of these AAC receivers that's just really good and probably NFL material like a lot of the ones you've seen over the years. What do you, yeah. what do you, I mean, that guy could end up as Tulsa's all time leading receiver for yards, which would be pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Great route runner. You know, they want to get the ball to him. Uh, can do things with it after he catches it. And, you know, these guys, when they, there's a lot of production to go around, you know, they're, I think they're 10th in the country in passing yards per game. So naturally there's going to be a lot of receivers that have a lot of catches. He just happens to be the leading one, but they're, they're all talented, but he's, He's a really good player. So they're, they rank highly, I think, 19th and nationally in time of possession, but they're 101 in rushing offense. They're only getting 126 yards a game. How are they holding on to the ball for 32 minutes a game when they're not really – haven't don't have that great of a rushing attack? Yeah. I think there's a, a little bit of a misconception there with the rushing yards bill because they've given up, I think, 21 sacks on the year. So that, that kind of offsets that a little bit, but they've been running the football. They, they, they've been successful and they've run it. Uh, they've given up some sacks. I think that obviously that negates from those, those rushing yards. Uh, but on top of that, they do a nice job of staying on track. Uh, they're efficient on third down. And uh, so when you convert in third downs, um, you stand on the field, obviously, and, and that lends to the time of possession piece of it. And then, so on that first play from Air Force, it seemed to me that Ray bit up on the play action fake. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, you're a young player. Um, he's played in, played in the Army game, didn't play in the Air Force game last year, uh, but just got his eyes in the wrong place. You know, that's something we, we talk about all week. And Ray's done a lot of really good things for us. And that one instant took his eyes off his key and ran the field on third and two and got the ball thrown over our heads. Uh, can't happen. And then in terms of uh, it seemed early on that you guys were having a tough time getting lined up. What was Air Force doing? Were they shifting a lot and really making it tough for your guys to figure out where they needed to be lined up? Yeah, they were. They were, you know, they, to their credit, they did a lot of, uh, of good stuff with their formations, uh, moving guys around and, and showing some things that we hadn't seen. And we were, we were uh, getting lined up off the, the three-man surface side. So. Uh, especially early on in the game, they were getting lined up pretty quick. And uh, we had a little bit of trouble with Justin early. And uh, that's on me. I, I can't put him in that situation. It's got to be easy for us to get lined up and go play. And so uh, we got into base a little bit later on, uh, settled us down a little bit, and then we went back to it. We didn't have the issue we did early on in the game. But they showed us some new stuff. And so we had a little bit of trouble getting lined up to it. Um, and they did a nice job, you know, schematically, you know, what they did with their formations, things like that. To, um, you know, they, like I said, going into that game, they do a lot of different, run, you know, four or five plays, they do them in a lot of different formations. And that was certainly what they did, you know, on Saturday. Um, so, yeah, we had a little bit of trouble getting lined up early, but we settled in and, and we're okay after that. Well, last for me, because I I see Pete's on, but did Air Force do something that was not legal? Because at one point I heard one of the coaches yelling, you can't do that. It was causing, did they, are they sending people in late or something like that? Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure, Bill. Exactly what you're talking about. I think they, they made a sub late one time. Um, um, there were a couple of legal blocks, but you know that, that happens in every game. So, uh, but I'm not sure exactly what uh, the situation you're referring to is. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. One thing on Tulsa's running game too: their uh, best running back, Denaric Price, played for the first time last week. Uh, Pete Medhurst. Brian, through four games, how would you assess the way this team has done uh, the, the technical aspects of it? Tackling, uh, assignment bust, just from a percentage standpoint, you know, where do you, where, where do you see your group at right now through four games? Well, I think really we played really well at times. Uh, and we've done some, you know, had some really, really head scratching moments, particularly in, in the back end. Um, and we were talking about it yesterday there's you know in the first four games we've given up a, a touchdown in the first drive in three of those games um if you take those scores away you're giving up about 15 points a game which is pretty decent um but you know like i keep saying it's you know all the scoring drives have come when, when teams have had explosive plays one or two of them in a drive 
And um, so the execution piece, um, not great. Got to get a lot better. Um, the situational awareness with some of the younger players has to get better. And that's something that we're, we're constantly working on. And, and we're going to get better every week uh, in that regard. I, I promise you that. It's a huge emphasis for us. And our guys know, you know, our, you know, our front seven's pretty good. And we can stop the run. And, and uh, I think we can hold up against most people. And so if we can just keep things in front of us, execute our coverages, um, and get off the field on third down, and then we're going to be pretty good. Um, people are going to score a ton of points. And so that always gives us a chance to win games. Uh, we've been pleased with a lot of things. I think we, we're getting the ball out a decent amount. Um, we see our kids trying to strip the football out. We swarm the football. We just have to execute better and be more disciplined. Uh, that's the, the, the piece that I want to see us improve the most on. And if we can do that, then we'll have a really good unit. Are you pleased with the amount of pressure that you've at least at times been able to generate on quarterbacks? Because certainly as you go along through the course of the rest of the schedule now, certainly until you get to Army, um, that, that's got to be something that your group uh, is able to do. Yeah, I think so. I think um, you know, four games in, I think we've got a decent amount of, of uh, pressure on the quarterback, got some sacks and, and some, some tackles for loss. And so the disruptive piece, I've been pretty pleased with, you know, when we have pressured, we've been able to um, to get pressure on the quarterback. There's times where you drop eight and, you, you know, you probably not get a lot of pressure, but you're trying to defend and just, just play coverage. But, yeah, I've been been pretty pleased with that so far, Pete. Phil's group, from a consistency standpoint, you know, year after year, you know, they're they're kind of good at what they do, and, and that philosophy is kind of stuck there. Um, how difficult uh, are they to prepare for as a team that certainly – uh, can be effective both running and passing the football. I know you try to make people one-dimensional, but that's a group that yeah. at times can do. Yeah, it's hard to make people one-dimensional that take exactly what you give them. You know, and so, so some teams you can make them play left-handed because, you know, there's certain things that they want to do and they hang their hat on, but you know, they run it effectively, they throw it, they kind of take what you give them. Um, like I said earlier, they, you know, what they do formationally by spreading you out, they create vertical, horizontal space. You know, that's their, their philosophy on offense. and. Um, and when they when they spread you out, Pete, it's it's easy to see when you're bringing pressure and those kind of that makes it easier um, because those things are harder to disguise. And so um, the the, the um, disguise piece is going to obviously be really important uh, for us this week. You know, we always want to try to confuse the, the quarterback a little bit when we can, and and uh, but that makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, but they're always a challenge to defend. I always going to this week looking at and watching film and. And, uh, you know, a lot of long nights trying to think about how, you know, how are we going to stop them um, because they're, they're talented and they're, they're good across the board. And um, it's going to be a big challenge for us. They lost a couple of excellent <clears throat> offensive linemen, um, you know, Smith playing for the Cowboys and, and Chris Paul's playing for Washington uh, right now. But they seem to have filled in there, um, you know, re filling those guys' spots and, and moving right on, thoughts on how their offensive line ha has played on, on the film you've been able to watch? Yeah, when you just watch the film, they don't look a whole lot different than they did last year uh, as far as the way they run block and pass block and all that. Um, so it looks like the same Tulsa football team that we played the last couple of years. I mean, they're very, very similar. Um, obviously, you got some guys that have a little bit more experience, uh, like Bren, and a lot of the returning wideouts, running backs. Uh, the, the least amount of experience probably the O-line, but you, you can't really tell it. Uh, Scott, how is this team responding to in-game adjustments that you and your staff are making? Good. Uh, you know, there's some things in, in the Air Force game. We tried to uh, make some adjustments during the course of the game that we didn't, uh, we didn't quite get done on, on the field. It was a little disappointing. But that's on us to communicate better and to make sure that our players understand. Um, but outside of that, I think it's been been really good uh, for the most part all year. Is that encouraging knowing that you've got a lot of younger players in some of those key positions when you make those adjustments? Uh, encouraging that we have some guys that have, have some experience. Yeah, certainly. I think um, it's nice when you have, you have guys that have been in the system for a while and you can you can tweak things and they understand exactly why you're doing it and the purpose of why you're tweaking it. And, and uh, our guys are, you know, we got smart guys. And so we're able to do those kind of things during the course of the game to, to help us. Um, you know, we, we just, um, 
you know, in, in the game last week, just got to do it a little bit faster, make sure we're all on the same page and get it communicated a little bit better and, and go out and execute it a little bit better when it happens. Good luck Saturday. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Wags. Will Harbor was running around out there with a uh, heavily bandaged uh, wrist. How did you feel he played coming back off of the injury? Yeah, I thought he played well. Uh, you know, I thought um, thought he played well. I thought Fletch played really well. Uh, so I was pleased with those guys. And, and um, you know, really the cast hasn't changed a whole lot for for Will. You know, it's it's hard to to grab a jersey and uh, a little bit more difficult to shed a block sometimes. But but he's fine. He hasn't missed a beat. How pleased are you with that inside linebacker group between Woods and Brooks and, and Will at that Mike position and then Fletcher and Ramos at the uh, at the Will? That that's a pretty good group of four guys, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's, it's the it's the best group we've had, you know, since I've been here from a depth standpoint, from a standpoint where you feel like there's there's four or five guys that can go in there and play and that you can win with. Um, and you know, Gianni Woods and Brooks is really, really talented. Um, and he's still learning. I mean, he's essentially a redshirt freshman because um, he didn't play last year at linebacker, you know. So, and, and Ramos has played a lot of snaps, came on, played a lot toward the end of last year. He's still growing and learning. And, um, you know, Harbor is kind of the, the veteran in that group, you know, compared to those other guys. But the, they're all really talented, all want to be really good, super coachable. And uh, I think they get better every week. So, really encouraged and excited about that group. And last for me, I mean, Busick, it's, it, he's been good in every game and done mm -hmm. made big plays. How, I mean, when a guy comes around and not only does he strip the guy, but he recovers the fumble himself. I mean, he can't do much more than that, right? Yeah, no, he's he's been uh, he's been a real bright spot for us on defense this year. I think you look at where he was a year ago, he's uh, all his hard work has paid off, plays extremely hard, um, trying to get him in some more situations where, where he can win off the edge because uh, obviously he can rush the quarterback for us, which is exciting. And uh, he's gotten, gotten to the quarterback a bunch and made some really big plays for us. So we're really excited about Busick and the way he's playing. Um, and we got to get him in more situations where we just get to cut him loose and let him go rush the queue. One may, one more for me, actually. Uh, is Do you take that tape of John Marshall running down the Air Force quarterback and stripping him and put that up as exhibit A? for the eat mentality you're trying to develop. I mean, he started as far away from that play as you could yeah. possibly be and ran it down from the backside. That's hustle personified. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we always point that stuff out really anytime it's a, 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 a tremendous effort play like that. You know, we talk about it all the time. You, you run to the football, right? Good things happen. And our guys do that. And I think that's why we've been able to get uh, some balls out like we have just purely based on effort. And then once we get there, really trying to get that thing out. So, yeah, you certainly do. You you want to point out things like that and emphasize them because you, obviously you get what you emphasize, right? One note on Busick, he's currently tied for seventh in the country in sacks per game. Uh, Pete, Metters. I just want to circle back to something you mentioned the first time around. On, those, on that success teams have had on first drives, is there – Anything that you can pinpoint, was it something that maybe they did you didn't see in film before that or just better execution by them on that first try? Yeah, we, uh, Pete, if you go back to the first game, it was, you know, we turned the ball over on the first play from scrimmage, I think at our 20. Right? Game, yeah. Yeah. And we had a pass interference call, so they got the ball up in like the six-yard line and um, we busted the coverage. Um, so that was, that was one of them. Um, the Memphis game, you know, we were we were playing coverage. We were defending. We were dropping into coverage, and and a deep defender got got the ball thrown over his head. So that was just lack of execution there. And then obviously the one at Air Force when when uh, we took our eyes off off of our key, and the ball got behind us. Um, so things that that uh, it's not like we got beat by a receiver. It's just you know not executing the coverage, not having our eyes in the right place, not being in the right position. And so we, we got to get that cleaned up and it can't happen. We can't spot people seven points right off the bat. You know, we're not good enough to do that. And our guys know that, and, you know, you can only talk about it so often, but we always talk about let's get off to a fast start and we haven't done that. And so um, just got to keep emphasizing it and uh, we got to do a better job. Got to get off to a better start. Physical techniques are one thing that you can teach, but eye discipline 
outside of stressing it, is is that some is that the only thing that you can do in terms of that particular mechanic? Because it's so important uh, to the difference between making a play or, as you've said, having a play, you know, get busted against you. Yeah, and that's the thing that's disappointing. And I think that the, the area that we got to improve on the most, and we're just we're very inconsistent. Um, and we're very direct and black and white about where our eyes need to be, uh, you know, what our keys are. You know, we talk about burning a hole in your key all the time. And uh, so it's it's frustrating when when they don't do that. Uh, obviously, we gotta we we emphasize it every day in practice, and uh, and we point it out when it doesn't happen. And um, you know, the thing you do is make changes personnel wise if you if you're not getting what you what you want. You know, so the thing here for us is we're gonna we're gonna play harder than everybody else, but we also have to be more disciplined than everybody else. And if you combine those two, uh, then we're gonna have a chance to be really really good. Uh, but it doesn't matter if you if you play harder than everybody else if you don't execute. Uh, you don't have your eyes in the right place, you know, so we've got to do a better job of that. I got to do a better job of coaching it. Um, and, uh, and I think we will moving forward. I, you know, I, our kids understand um, what we haven't been great at so far and, and we're, we're doubling down on that. So we'll be better moving forward, uh, Pete. Um, I know that for sure.